somewhere in the world right now, it is sunburn season. It just so happens to be sunburn season here right now. So we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the treatment and the prevention of sunburns. My name is Dr. Shaw. I'm Dr. Maxfield, and welcome back to our channel where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology, and we educate you on everything you can do to help your skin. Today, we're gonna to be talking about all things related to sunburn. If you've unfortunately stumbled upon this video because you have a sunburn right now, we're gonna be talking about what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing right now. All things sunburn, here we go. Here we go. If you have a sunburn right now, you can scroll to the section of treatment of sunburn because you have no interest in learning about the mechanism of sunburn right now. You just wanna know the treatment. So skip ahead, we'll put some timestamps in there. Now to dive in, because we do this in all videos, what causes sunburn? Obviously the sun, but what exactly is happening on the molecular level? And then we can talk about some of the treatments, it will make more sense. So the sun gives off multiple wavelengths of light. One of the ones that's most problematic is UVB, and this UVB's maximum absorption occurs in the chromophore of our DNA. In our skin cells, they absorb most of the UVB. Now what happens is this results in a triggering of cell death called apoptosis. The skin cells die. You can actually see them under the microscope. They call it sunburn cells. The little nucleus is all shriveled up. This cell is dying it's hurting, it's actually pretty much dead already. And then additionally, you also have cell signaling from nitric oxide, which causes the blood vessels to dilate, which is where you get the redness, warmth, that it goes along with the pain of your dying skin. So basically what's happening when you get hit with the sun and you end up with a sunburn is absolute mayhem underneath the microscope. Your skin cells are dying. Your blood vessels are getting dilated. Prostaglandin is going crazy. Nitric oxide is going crazy. You have free radical damage just beating up your entire skin cells. It's absolute mayhem and death, DNA damage, horrible scene underneath the microscope. It's not good. This is why we tell you to wear sunscreen. Now, as a result of this, what happens? You get immediate redness. After that immediate redness, then you can get pain. You can get swelling. You can get really profound edema like what you saw in this video. So in really bad sunburns, you actually get edema or swelling of the tissue. And you can actually put your finger on your forehead and it will indent. That's how bad it can get. And then after that immediate inflammatory process, then you get healing. Your skin cells are dead, so they actually slough off. So you'll actually get a peeling effect afterwards, an exfoliating effect effect to some extent. Not a good exfoliating effect, but a bad exfoliating effect. And then over time, healthy skin cells will come in, but there's still damage of DNA at that point, and sunburns certainly increase your risk of cancer. Now, let's talk about what you're going to do to prevent these, right? And prevention is actually key. We'll talk more about that in treatment, but prevention is the name of the game with this. But what you can do, uh, sun avoidance, I'm more of like the sun protection kind of person. If you don't know me, I'm a surfer. I love being outside. I think being active is good for you as a whole person, but sun protection is paramount. Sunscreen is foundational, right? Sunscreen works in multiple different ways. It can not only reflect some of the light out, but also absorb some of the energy from the light. The whole goal, the whole purpose is to prevent that light and energy from getting to your skin. Additionally, you can elevate that with some topical antioxidants. You can actually supplement with oral antioxidants as well. Both of those help complement sunscreen to decrease the damage to your skin. But to keep it a million times more simple than that, what you're going to do is you're going to just wear sunscreen. You're gonna wear sunscreen, at least SPF 30, which is gonna give that UVB protection against sunburns, and also broad spectrum, which is gonna give you protection against UVA. You're gonna reapply it every two hours when you're out in the sun, and if you're in the water, it might be water resistant up to 80 minutes. You have to look at the front of your sunscreen bottle to know how water resistant it is. But if it is water resistant up to 80 minutes, then you're going to reapply every 80 minutes if you're out in the water. And that's essentially how you're going to prevent sunburn in addition to some of the sun protective clothing, antioxidants, and the such. But that's the minimum thing you need to do. Just wear sunscreen. That's how you prevent it. Now let's talk about treatment. So you have a sunburn. So how do you treat it? Well, first off, the cells are actually already dead. This is a big problem when it comes to treating the sunburn. But you can go through multiple topical anti-inflammatories or better yet, ingredients that help with wound healing. We're not necromancers. We cannot bring your cells back to life. But what we can do is try to calm down that inflammatory reaction. Now, they've done a ton of studies on this. Probably not enough studies, to be honest. But the main things that the scientists looked at and the dermatologists looked at in the past, these are like many years going back. Like 80 years they've been studying how to treat sunburns. The main things that you would think of is be like corticosteroids, like hydrocortisone or NSAIDs because there's this inflammatory cascade happening. What they found was that there wasn't actually really much of a benefit to any of these things because again, the cells are already dead. So we have somewhat bad news for you. There's nothing to reverse this inflammatory process once that cascade is happening. It's like a car wreck and like once the car's hit, you cannot stop them from like the damage happening at that point. What you can do is really just control symptoms, unfortunately. So what are we doing to control symptoms? 
Well, one, you can do some cool compresses. That's just gonna help with some of the redness, some of the pain. The next thing that you can do is put on some calming and soothing ingredients. One of the top players here would be aloe vera. Yeah, and I'm a huge proponent of aloe, and I love it in this space because I think aloe vera is like the marriage of those two, two products. So it has some anti-inflammatory properties. It's actually pretty well studied. It has been shown to help with wound healing. Plus, unlike some other ingredients, it can really feel cool and soothing. So you get the nice subjective experience backed up with some objective data. And so I'm a big fan of aloe. A problem with aloe vera though, if you, if you use the raw plant, it has anthraquinones in it, which are problematic and cause irritation, cause allergenicity. So you may be better off and are probably better off finding this ingredient in a product. So aloe is an option, soy is an option. You can use other just bland emollients, fragrance-free moisturizers, something from CeraVe, from Cetaphil, from Neutrogena, something that's gonna calm and soothe the skin. If you look at Aveeno, they have a lot of oat, which is calming and soothing to the skin. So just really bland emollients that are gonna protect the skin barrier. You could certainly use Vaseline on the skin here. It's protective, it's very helpful with burns, so it wouldn't be contraindicated. In fact, I'm a big fan of Vaseline. Another thing that people do is they'll take Vaseline, they'll actually wrap the areas with uh, saran wrap um, to really just calm the skin down and things under occlusion tend to be more helpful and more effective. But again, this inflammatory cascade is already occurring and it's very difficult to stop it. With Vaseline or petrolatum and sunburns, or burns in general, but let's go to our Dr. Google here, type in uh, Vaseline, sunburns, and we have do not use petrolatum Vaseline or other oil-based products. They can block the heat. And this is something I hear over and over, it traps the heat. This is, in my opinion, a very common misconception. It's not like you get burned from an oven or from the sun and your skin stays as hot as the sun. And so you're trapping that exorbitant, extra physiologically hot heat in the skin. Your skin feels hot. It's actually fairly normothermic. It's still your physiological temperature. You can't trap that in. That's all you, baby. You're just feeling the dilated blood vessels, the warmth that we talked about already from the nitric oxide. That's what's causing that sensation of heat. So immediately after a burn, yes, you wanna cool it in cool water, cool compresses. That's fine. When you're dealing with the aftermath, of it and the healing process, Vaseline becomes your best friend. And in fact, it's commonly used in a lot of blistering disorders, burns. It's been studied in burns, shown to be helpful with healing. It's an absolutely appropriate ingredient to help with the healing process of a sunburn. Immediately after, it might feel uncomfortable, but it's a great option. And then the next major player in topicals would be something like a corticosteroid or hydrocortisone or triamcinolone or some other prescription option. Now, they've looked at this extensively because it makes the most sense of all the topicals because it calms down all the inflammation that's occurring. It appears in all the studies that they've looked at that topical corticosteroids don't seem to have benefit in sunburn, believe it or not. Now I could see them helping with the symptoms, but it doesn't seem to be effective for some reason. So it's just not effective. I mean, that's what the studies show, unfortunately. So then if you go on to the oral medications that you can take for this, again, you can take oral corticosteroids. Now, if you're somebody who's in that severe inflammatory stage where you have tremendous swelling, then that could definitely help with some of the symptom relief. But again, the data showing that it actually helps slow the progression of sunburn or make sunburn any better as far as like the timeline of it, the data just doesn't exist. Then you look at oral NSAIDs like your ibuprofen. Is that gonna be beneficial because prostaglandins are involved? And it appears that they have better data than your corticosteroids or your prednisone or your topical corticosteroids. But at the same time, it can also have untoward effects because what's happening when you have a bad sunburn is you get third spacing of fluid in your body. So you get a lot of leaking of water, the water in your body into your tissues, which can actually cause you, even though you don't seem dehydrated, you actually look swollen, your body is dehydrated, your intravascular pressure is dehydrated. So you can actually get a lot of poor perfusion to your kidneys. And so then if you take an NSAID while you're dehydrated, that could really damage the kidneys. And so if you're going to take ibuprofen, which is recommended for some people that have bad sunburns, both for pain control and for to decrease those prostaglandins, if you're going to do that, you have to drink a ton of water because otherwise you could really damage your kidneys in this process. And that kind of takes the sunburn into the whole level. There's also th some things called like sun poisoning or hyperthermia that you get. This is when your body totally loses regulation of your temperature. That, that's when it's like a, a severe systemic life-threatening condition where it goes way past the skin. You lose your ability to control your body, but that's completely beyond the scope of this here. We're just talking about sunburns but it really can become a serious thing. All right, so here's our quick fast facts on treating sunburn. You have a sunburn right now, this is what you're gonna do. In the first two hours afterwards, just get out of the sun 
and start applying cool compresses. Not ice, but just cool compresses to cool down that inflammation. After that, you can apply aloe vera. Aloe vera probably has the best data, even though it's controversial. Aloe vera will help calm and soothe in that process. And you can also apply just bland emollients. So if you're allergic to aloe vera, just a bland fragrance-free moisturizer in the immediate aftermath. After 24 hours, start using Vaseline to heal that burn tissue essentially at that point. Now, if you're having a lot of pain, ibuprofen or acetaminophen could be appropriate, like your Tylenol, but just know that it could damage the kidneys and have other bad side effects. So just make sure you're drinking a ton of water and only take those if you absolutely have to. And again, if it gets worse and worse, make sure you go see your dermatologist. That pretty much sums it up. I mean, the most important thing is preventing this from occurring, but guess what? You're here, we're here, it's done, and we'll help you through it. Sorry that this happened to you. We'll see you all in the next video. We'll see you next time. Oh, uh, necromancers. Necromancers. D&D &D back in the day, or <laughs> he doesn't know what that is. I don't know what that is.